Okay, so here's the finished product. Um, it's been a while since I did a little bit of vintage on this. Uh, uh, my idea of using this piece, um, Douglas and I had a discussion and I really didn't think it was up to standard, so he came up with the idea of um, putting in a shield. Um, so there's a few videos of uh, us measuring out and cutting up the shield. So let's go and have a look at how this shield was put together. Um, started off with visiting Redneck. We thought we'd get the curvature of the, the fender uh, using the needle profiler. Um, just so we can, you know, the leather. Took two bites of it, top of the shield and bottom of the shield. While we're there, I thought I'd have a look at the bike because uh, some other ideas of doing a fender bib. Maybe I could look at uh, making a, a tank bib or a tank bra as well. So I thought I'd have a close up look at the tank, look at the, sh the shape. And while I was up that end, I noticed that the red, white, and blue of the tank, I was rather happy to see because it tied in really well with our color scheme. So. And then titanium back home. Douglas actually went and got a uh, uh, piece of curved metal. Uh, it was actually a puller brush holder, which is the right um, right bend in it, right curvature in it. And so we marked out the size of uh, the shield we wanted on this uh, curved piece of metal. Cut out the shield, uh, we used a nibbler uh, to cut into the metal. Actually, I've still got a lot to take off, haven't I? It's got a nice curve in it. Just got to let this cool down so that it doesn't discolour when with the heat. I've put it down on the aluminium plate so that it'll help to suck the heat out of the side of it.
Hello, Douglas here. Um, I've been out this morning and um, had the shielding engraved. Um, we're now very carefully going to drill the hole in the top. Um, the mounting hole is marked there. Um, to protect the front of it, I'm going to tape it over while I'm drilling it. Should have brought a pair of scissors with me, but I haven't. We need to drill. I've set up with a uh, a one mil drill in the chuck. Um, no, and we're going to go and drill a pilot hole at one mil. We just raise the table up a bit. And now I'm going to slowly work myself up in sizes. And no, I couldn't find the chuck key. Mess you bench that uh, hardly ever got out of the workshop. One of these days I'll um, I'll clean it up. We'll now go, now go through with a, a two mil. These small bits I can get away with um, locking that the chuck by hand anyway. <laughs> I'm going to slowly work, walk that up in sizes and I've got to hold it a little tighter as I go with the bigger bigger drills. Putting very little pressure on the, the drill bit, letting it go through of its own accord. I had my finger locked over the edge to stop um, stop the piece slewing sideways. I could go straight to my final bit now, but um, I'd rather. So I'm going to continue to. We probably need to drop the table a touch. Now my block's not quite at the edge of my finger, so... So we're up to 6mm now. Once again, just letting the very gentle pressure to go through. And stopping when I see mostly wood chips, because I want the hole to be very clean through the other side. Okay, so the um, the next thing I want to do is drill two holes in the corners for the small rivets that Malcolm will hold it onto the leather with. Now, um, 12 mils from the corner, so 12 mil in from that corner. Actually, I might make it 10 mil. 10 mil in from that corner and 10 mil in from that corner we've got to um, to bisect that that corner there and um, drill a very small I think we worked out it was a 2.5 mil hole. So what I'm going to do is um, pack this up here. It's very hot in the shed. I'm going to go back to um, Malcolm's semi air conditioned um, leather shed and we'll continue from there. Oh. 
Well, we're back in uh, Leather's, Malcolm's Leather Shed. Um, I'll just move the leather work very carefully onto the other bench because um, for a couple of reasons I'm going to work right here. One, the light is very good. And uh, two, the air conditioner is blowing directly at my back. And believe you me, my back is quite wet from being out in the other, in my workshop, which is, has no form of cooling at all. And uh, it's quite a warm day here again. So I've got those two scratch marks. I should have bought, uh, I'll try and use a pencil. I should have bought um, should have bought a scriber in with me from my shed but I shall do it this way. We'll get a rough idea of um, whether those lines are in the right place. Oh. I can't get used to the inches. I'm, I'm a metric person and uh, I'm afraid this ruler is inch with a second re so that's um, 10, 15, 16 mil, and that one is 10, that's 10, 15, 16 mil. So where we've got the intersection of that line is just there. And where we've got the intersection of the line is just there. Now, I really do need something to put a little mark on there. Let's have a look and see what I can find that Malcolm would want me to use. What are they? Oh. I know what I'll use. If you're not watching guys, I'll use the uh, the end of my thing, but I hope none of you are watching. What I want is just a, a little register so that the the tip of the drill has got something to hold it in place while we get started. Now these need to be 2.5 mil holes so once again I'm going to start off with uh, one mil and work my way up. Let's um, get the tape off for now, if it wants to come off. If I leave it on there too long, it leaves the residue behind. So the idea is as soon as you can after you've finished drilling, you get it off.
Oh, can't get his bin open. There's a bit of around the hole. Um, what I'm going to do now, I'm going to leave those holes for now. Um, I'll have to go back at them again. Um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go and get some metal polish and see there's a, a little bit of a where I um, sanded the edges with the uh, linisher, a bit of heat build up and there's a bit of discoloration. I'm just going to see if I can massage that out of the the shield. Okay. Um, good old auto sole metal polish. Um, I love this stuff. Let me just put that over there out of the way. I've got to remember where everything is on this bench so I put it all back exactly where it was or else I'll be in trouble. I find the best way to use this stuff is with your finger. You don't want a lot on there, but you keep working it back into the area that you, you're trying to polish. And, um, we'll see what that's done. Right, that's cleaned it up nicely. Um, I've just got a little bit more to do there. Not going any further onto the piece than I have to. a remnant of the marking line that I used to mark the shield when I cut it with a nibbler so we'll just give that a bit of a wipe around staying right on the edge I'm trying to grab this down and clean off that glue that we left on there from the drilling I'll clean that off, I have another go if I need to, wiping it away from the centre. I'd rather do it several times than uh, try and do it all in one hit. Perhaps a little bit of iso alcohol on there might, um, might clean it up a little bit. Just got a faint little bit still on this edge here. Trying not to get the polishing compound down into the letters if I can help. Um, when Malcolm gets home you'll find out why. I'm away from the letters. If Malcolm was here, he could probably use one of his Dremel pads in it, but um, I'll leave that to him. I'll just clean it up a little bit. This is as probably as much as I'm going to do now. I'll leave the rest for Malcolm. A soft rag now. I'm going to give it a good old polish.
and got a few scratches down that side. I don't quite know where they came from. Might be able to, if I hit them again with this, I might be able to take some of them out. I hope this isn't anything special with Malcolm's, I'll be in trouble. Well, I think that looks okay. As my mother would have said, a blind man would be glad to see it. Well, that's it for me. The two um, rivets here, uh, which tie into the gold. Of it. And if you look closely here on the shield itself, it's got the, I can do all things through Christ, who strengthens me, um, engraved on there. And we got that done professionally because, as you saw before, my uh, results weren't the greatest. Um, all right, so basically what I've done here, I've also lined the back. Um, that concho goes through uh, to two uh, Chicago screws. I screwed that down, which holds it in place. Uh, I've glued this down and I've punched the holes through um, and I've made it come across the uh, as much as I can of the um, the lacing as well just so it doesn't disturb his paint but there we go one finished product um, I'm hoping he uh, likes what he sees um, I did actually clean up this end as well remember it was all different uh, different lengths because as I said it was going under the seat um, the setup was a bit different than I anticipated and actually seat is stops about here somewhere so you can actually see this top so I had to clean that up as well um, but there you go one bib so the next thing I'll probably do is do a video of me taking it to Redneck's place and um, one seeing how he likes it and see if it fits uh, but that's it that's our video of uh, Redneck's Fender bib. Good to go. See you, mate. Bye. Well, I reckon he's lining these holes up. That's My brother's going to die, Greg. Do you want to put the. Uh, Do you want to see if there's a. I can't see it. Anymore. You got the bolt? Yep. That's alright. Is it going to go through there? Yep. I just can't see whether where the hole is though. That is really fantastic. I had to win a bike show with that. Let's go get it to start. I've got to find the hole. I see you using the right tool for the job. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Lucky to find one. It's got a bit of curve in it. That was That's supposed to nice. be you got to get a gold um, nut for you now. Yeah. Maybe you just got to get this I wonder one. wonder where you find one of those. Can you get the other one? Yep. It does light up a bit. Yeah. The idea of the stitching was so it had to bend down and sort of have mm -hmm. a, a curve over. It looks great. But the... Um, the shield was a long time coming. There's so many different ideas. That was. The, I engraved was, it on the leather. It didn't work. I wasn't expecting that at all. <laughs> and see, the shield is past the the rest. So yeah, it, you put your bags and things here. And you, yeah, you yeah. Both. And I just thought I had to tie it in with this because it just it just finished it. It's not taking. Why is it not taking?
probably not quite square just wiggle it around a little bit also I don't I think it's a bit thick it's not quite catching the teeth you know might I mean? need a slightly longer, longer bolt because I'm on yeah probably will need a longer bolt what about now? putting it over the top of the thing uh, would that work possibly because it'll squash the leather down Slightly longer bolts, but yeah. both of them would probably be. Yeah, it's not. It's not quite catching, so it's a bit thick. It is five mil leather because I thought you're going to want it to protect the. I oh, no. Got it now. No, it's just not quite catching. No, it's probably just not long enough. You might have to push down on the seat to make that metal bar go down farther. You don't want to just get it on a couple of threads, you want it to go down a, a few. I don't think I got it. Just let it go for a second. Not well, as much curvature as I thought it would be. It'll probably droop down with age. Yeah, yeah. You know, like everything droops with age, look at me. <laughs> yeah. Okay, let me have a... Oh, that's not, that's not bad. That's pretty tight against there. Yeah, a little bit. Could go under the seat a little bit, but for length, you said yeah, that, that width and length. That, that, that looks about right. Great. That looks great. And the red, white, and blue ties into the red, yeah. white, and blue. That's why I was really happy to see you had red, white, and blue in yeah. your tank. Last year's model was just blue. Mm. That is beautiful. That is beautiful. Oh. You may need to get along with scrubs. Charlie. I don't know. It seems to be pretty tight. Yeah. yeah. Just want to make sure I didn't cross it. I just wanted to go very far down. Yeah. And the Lord behind you. Uh, will they be metric or uh, UNF? Or UNF is it? Yeah, you should be able to get a longer. Yeah, it's alright. There you go. Thank you, lot. No That's wonderful. As I said originally I thought it was going to go under the back seat, so that was just a raw edge. Mm. But, now yeah. that I've seen it in situ, it's not going to go anywhere. Alright, done. I'll be putting this on the Sportster page. Yeah. Alright, sorted. Are we out of here? Yeah.